was going to go and try and see if I could find Shungile, but I managed to bump into a beautiful herd of elephants that are just sitting next to the road having a really nice feed and there's lots of little babies and mom is chewing away on her branch so we've got a little bit sidetracked unfortunately well fortunately I would say it's always absolutely special to spend time with Ellie's especially when there's the little young ones now between those two naughty sort of six seven year olds there is a tiny little baby that is just hiding from us at the moment so I'm hoping it's going to come out I would say that it's about a year to two years old and it's just went underneath mom as you guys came across to us so I'm hoping it's going to appear now now but isn't it beautiful with this late afternoon light that's just coming through the thickets and shining onto these beautiful elephants as they feed and I think it's going to be quite interesting to see where they go because they're right on the main road so let's see how these youngsters will handle there's a vehicle that's come from the other direction and you can see that they're shaking their heads and it's quite typical of young elephants is that they've seen mom do it and then they try and mimic that behavior and they know that when mom shakes her head and throws her ears out everything runs away because it's quite scared of this large animal so the little ones try it and when you don't move then they get a little bit unsure of themselves and are not sure exactly what to do and there's the little baby you see it it's just popped out there isn't it cute no, I think actually it's younger than a year old. That's still tiny, that little one. But look how wrinkly its forehead is with lots and lots of fur. Isn't that amazing? Now, I would say, hmm, I reckon that that's not even two, three months old. It's very, very little. Isn't it absolutely cute? That forehead is just too funny. It's all wrinkled. <laughs> Now you can see how it positions itself behind the adults and the reason for that is because it will actually be using the adults for shade when there's still the sun and the sun is quite high at the moment and still quite warm the little baby elephants of that age are quite susceptible to sun so unfortunately for them they get sunburnt and so they use the shade of the adults to just stay away from the sun and keep their ears out of the sun and make sure that they don't get hurt by the sun itself but isn't it cute? You can see it can even fit underneath one of the teenagers, which shows you just how little it is. Now, you see how all the adults have come round just to protect it and to make sure that it's not on the outsides so that it doesn't have any worries and doesn't get hurt by anything. And all the adults will protect that little baby. Now. Isn't that amazing? Absolutely incredible. You see how they're all protecting it? Now you can see they've gone quite close to a vehicle there. So I'm sure they're looking for a way to cross the road, but there's a bit of a thicket on the left side of that vehicle, so they're going to probably have to go around it or come down towards our direction to be able to cross the road. And you can see, look how she's using her trunk just to pull her little baby in the direction she wants it to go. So you can see she's pulling it away from the vehicle. Come this way, we're going the other way now. But the little baby wants to go make friends. I believe a lot of you think that this little baby is very cute. Well, it is indeed. And it's funny, it wants to go and see what this vehicle is. It keeps trying to push through all the adults to get closer to the vehicle. And they're all trying to keep it. You see, look, they're trying to keep it in the middle. But it's not listening. It's going underneath their tummies, between their legs. <laughs> and being very, very naughty at this stage. Now, I'm pretty sure that at some stage it's going to get pulled back by mom with her trunk. And it's going to be made to come back down towards our side there we go you can see they've now closed it off look at how mom is just pushing it slowly down back down the road away from the car so even though it is trusting of the vehicle and it's not threatened by the vehicle it still wants to teach its baby that there needs to be a certain boundary that it needs to stay away and, and can't go too close and just making sure that it is safe but isn't this incredible Uh, you can see how difficult it must be for any predator to get anywhere near a baby elephant. You can imagine if this was lions, how they close ranks like that. It's going to be almost impossible for a lion to get anywhere near a young one. Those big adults with their big trunks and tusks are going to be able to defend that baby by causing this sort of blockade around it. So a really, really clever way of protecting your young. And that's why a herd system when you're an elephant or any other animal actually works really, really well 
It allows you to be able to have multiple eyes and ears and lots of different individuals that help protect the young of the herd. So very, very clever indeed. I wonder if they're going to come back towards us now. There's a nice big gap that they can walk through if they want to come this way. There's not too much bush in their way. It's just right there in front of the vehicle. There's a little bush. And I wonder if they actually don't want to eat it. There might be something there that they want to eat. And so that's why they're going quite close to that car, just to see what's going on. Oh, and here goes a tree over the road by the looks of it. So you can see the female there, she's busy breaking branches. And you can see how strong they are. Just watch how she just pulls up big, thick branches. Now, if that was us, there's no way that we would be able to break that. But what she does is she uses that really heavy head and that trunk, and that trunk will probably weigh close to 200 pounds. And she uses that in combination with the tusk and will basically just leverage that branch and break it. And for us to do that would be really almost impossible. So it just gives you an idea of just how strong they really are. Go. Now that particular tree well, it doesn't look like it was actually alive. It looks like it's almost dead. So see that you're wondering why their foot is so circular. Well, it's for two reasons. One is with an elephant, is that because of their mass, they're not able to jump or to, to move their feet very easily. So a big wide surface area helps to be able to find grip and get into places that otherwise would be very, very difficult. So they can negotiate um, rocky areas, water, mud, and it distributes their weight nicely so that they don't have to worry about sinking too deep in muddy areas when they go and s s go for water. The other reason will be because of the, the heaviness of them is that they need a fatty layer to be able to cushion all the bones that they have in their legs. You can imagine the pressure on the toes and the feet um, from all that weight and so there's a big fat round pad underneath and it's much like having the sole of your shoe is it's able then to cushion that foot and make sure that that foot doesn't get damaged and they don't get too much pressure on the toes itself and that doesn't lead to any sort of micro fractures in the feet so it's a very very clever system indeed and you can actually see the way that they're standing now look how spongy that foot is when they lift the foot it all kind of goes into a smaller circle and then as they put it back down again it just spreads nicely and funny enough with elephants is they actually stand on their toes so it's much like a woman when she wears high heels they have that same angle of slope to their feet and then as they push down so everything compresses and their foot can then flatten out a little bit and be protected you can see there we go now they've found their way across the road just on the other side of the bush. Little baby in the middle. Now that one's about to get a ball of dung on its head. It's in the firing line, which is not ideal. So you can see it's walking right behind the other one while it's dropping a piece of dung, which is really not very clever at all. It's not the best time of day when you get a big ball of elephant poo on your head. So unluckily for that one, it's going to need to find another way around. Right, now we're going to sit with these a while longer because they really are quite entertaining 